Coach Colin, coolest high-performance coach in the world. What I've noticed is 96% of you aren't subscribed to the channel. So we're about to hit 30,000 subscribers and there's still 97% of you, which means that I would be at like 300,000 subscribers and that would help the channel so much. It would help me hire researchers. It would help me hire more people to do what I'm doing right now. It would help us get more shows out. It would help a tremendous amount. So if you find any value in the video that you're watching right now, please, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. I love to see these two together. This is Tucker Carlson and Jordan Peterson. And what you're about to see in this clip is Jordan Peterson is about to send a message to what we like to call the climate cult. Um, it's made up of environmentalists and a lot of people who are very left leaning. I won't say far left, because I don't like when they call people far right, but I will say that they are left leaning. And he's about to say something very, very impactful. And what I'm going to do afterwards is what I like to do very often, which is go past not just what's being said, but to ask a very important question towards what Jordan Peterson brings up in terms of nuclear energy. And I think it's a question that we all have to start thinking about more. Not just why they do things, why don't they do things. But let's get into the clip. And so the environmentalists offer us a story to live by, and it's a, a, a pseudo-religious story, and it essentially elevates the biosphere, the earth, Gaia, um, the earth goddess, let's say, to the status of primary deity and characterizes her as sort of a waif-like, innocent victim, easily taken advantage of and fragile. It casts the entire human endeavor on the social front as a raping and pillaging patriarchal monster only interested in power. And it casts the individual as like a, a, a devouring mouth riding on the back of that giant, essentially. And so that's a description of the world. And there's some truth to that, right? Because we can wreak environmental havoc. Yes. Social structures can become power mad and we can be um, carelessly consumerist, but it's a very incomplete story. It, it, it demonizes in a very pathological manner. So when you hear people say things like, human beings are nothing but a cancer on the face of the planet, or there's too many people for the, on the planet for the earth to, to feed, let's say, then you're seeing reflections of that underlying pseudo-religious narrative, and it's extraordinarily dangerous. Now, the reason that you can see that in some ways it's a religious structure rather than a than a, 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 what, what you, a careful attempt to gramp, grapple with the full realities of the world is that it has these odd features. So, for example, the environmentalists tend to radically oppose nuclear power and also natural gas. And it's clearly the case that there's nothing that reduces carbon production more effectively than nuclear power. That's, yeah. I, I don't think anybody with any yeah. sense ever debates that. And it's also clearly the case that if we were careful with nuclear power, and we could be because we've been building nuclear plants for a long time, that we could be providing extremely low cost energy to people, especially poor people throughout the world. But we, we are not going to do that. In fact, we have an anti-energy policy in place, especially in any places that are ruled essentially by the left. And the consequence of that is, uh, well, I just saw today, UNICEF just released a report showing that there's been a 25% increase in the last year and a half in the number of women and children that are starving around the world. It's a direct consequence of the increase in energy prices, which are in themselves a direct consequence of anti-industrial policies put in place by hypothetically well-meaning, deluded, pseudo-religious environmental worshippers of the apocalypse. It's, it's an appalling situation, and it's, <laughs> it's likely to get worse, I would say, before it gets better. Amazing words from Dr. Peterson, as always. And the thing that I would love to do is to be able to put my carbon emissions up against any elite person, any Biden, any any Harris, any even Zelensky. I mean, uh, up against any of the Musk, Bezos, anybody, Gates, anyone that you could name. I would love to put my carbon emissions up. Against, I would love to put your carbon. I would love to take you and me, both of our carbon emissions together and see where we rate on the chart, because 
What we're told over and over again is that we're the problem. We're told that we're the issue. We're told that there's too many of us. And it's like, is there? You know? Because if we were able to see all the elites and all of their carbon emissions, maybe we'd be like, hmm, maybe if you guys cut it in half, all of us would be fine. Maybe that is the situation, you know? But another question that begs to be asked as I listen to Dr. Peterson talk about all this is if nuclear energy is a solid path forward and is going to lower our carbon footprint and is one of the, the lowest uh, uh, carbon emissions type of energy, if all that's true, you know, it's it's not a question. It, the, the question becomes like, why aren't we doing it? And and I know there's probably drawbacks, but I think why we aren't doing it is because the second that we start doing something like that, not only does everything get better for us as as people, you know, we the people, all of a sudden the apocalypse doesn't seem so looming. All of a sudden there's no need for carbon tracking anymore, right? From there, there's no need for 15-minute cities because that's just not a thing that needs to happen at that point because the 15-minute city is is directly linked to tracking carbon, to keeping carbon emissions down, so there'd be no need for that. There's no need for 15-minute uh, cities. There's no need to separate big cities up into districts. If there's no need for any of that, there's no need for that massive sense of control. What else are all those things I just mentioned? What else are those linked to? Well, then there'd be no need for us because carbon carbon tracking is directly linked to uh, a social credit system because that would be part of your social credit score, right? So there'd be no need for that. And now there'd be no need for this mass tracking that seems like it's on the rise via digital IDs. All of a sudden... All of these things that seem so bleak and so terrible for us as people, all of a sudden they're off the table when it comes to nuclear energy. So it's not the fact that nuclear energy is this huge drawback or it's so dangerous. It just doesn't give rise to everything that we've been hearing about. It doesn't give rise to this great reset of sorts that you know the WEF says is essential. You know, I think that's the big reason why we're not getting into nuclear energy. But again, I would love to know what you think. What do you think? I know there's drawbacks. There has to be drawbacks. There's drawbacks to every energy source. Are the drawbacks to nuclear energy just too massive? Do you really think that there's too many of us? I, on, I really don't think there's too many of us. I don't think that's an issue. I think there's one sector of us, you know, that big 1%. I think they're taking up just as much as all of us, you know, what are there, 8 billion people? I think 8 billion people in all the carbon and everything that we emit, I think it's comparable. Like, I think that 1%, those super elites, I think they're comparable to everything that we do. And if they could cut theirs in half, I think we'd all be in a better place. I don't know. Or, or maybe we just get into nuclear energy and nobody has to cut anything. I don't know. But what do you think? What do you think? What do you think about the, what Dr. Peterson said? What do you think about what I'm putting to the table? And I just like to say I love to see that Tucker Carlson, in the midst of everything that's happening with him, just doubles down and says, you know what? Bring me Jordan Peterson. <laughs> He's like, if they hate me now, let them hate me some more. Bring me Dr. Peterson, please, please. <laughs> but anyways, guys, if you found value to that video, please hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, please share it out. Share it with a friend. Share it on your Twitter. Add me on Twitter. It's I am Coach Colin. Instagram, I am Coach Colin. And Rumble, I am Coach Colin. All right, I'm out.